Let's go ahead and scroll down and we have to work on this list. So let's go ahead and copy this log and just paste it here. I'm going to say something like fetching all servers and we don't need the IP address. And all I have to do here is to return the server repo and we want to call the find all. And as you can see for the find all, we can pass a page. So if you scroll down, you can see there is one where we can pass a page and that's the one that we're going to use. So I'm going to do find all, I'm going to pick any one of them and then I'm going to create a page. So I can say something like page requests and then I do of and you can see I can pass in a page and the size. So I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to say give me the first page. So page zero, which means it's going to start from the beginning. And then let's say I'm going to pass in the limit, which is an integer. So this is going to return a page and we can just convert it to a list because we're returning a list and I can do a static import for this. So if you really want to return a page, you can go ahead and return a page, but I want to return a list. But when I'm returning that list, I also want to limit. I don't want to get all the servers. Let's say if I have like 500 servers, the find all is going to try to return all of these servers. So I don't want to do that. I want to just limit the number of servers that I get back when I try to list all the servers. So that's why I pass in this limit by passing the first page. So that's going to be page zero and then give me like 10 or 30 or the first five or something like that. And then of course, since we pass this argument inside of define all it would return a page instead of a list or anything collection so we transform this into a list by just adding that to list to it and i'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and copy the uh, log as well and paste this here i'm gonna say fetching uh, i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna say server by id and then pass in the ID. So I'm gonna put opening and close curly braces and then pass in the ID so that we know what ID we're trying to fetch the server for. And then all I have to return is the server repository. So server repository that find by ID, as you can see down here, pass in the ID and then we need to call the get. So when we call the get, that's gonna return the actual server that it finds by that specific ID. So now let's go ahead and work on the update. So the update is another save. I'm gonna scroll up and copy all this and go down and then paste it here for the update and just remove this image because when we update we're not going to update the image and then i'm going to say updating server and then pass in the name of the server and this is just another save. The difference is when you pass the ID, then JPA is smart enough to know that it's an existing ID, like it finds it in the database, then it's going to do an update. If there is no ID or the ID is null, then it's going to do a create or it's going to add the server in the list or in the database. And let's go ahead and scroll down. Now we have to work on the delete. So let's copy this log one more time and paste it here. And we're going to say deleting server and then pass the ID pass in the ID like this, we can say by ID. All we have to do is to delete. So we're going to call the repository again, call the delete, pass in the ID. Actually, you have to call delete by ID, pass in the ID. And then here we can go ahead and return true. So like that and do a static import for this. So if this is successful, then it's going to reach this line. So that's going to return true. Otherwise, this is going to throw an error. So we'll never reach this line on line 74. So that was pretty easy, by the way, using JPA. Um, but I have to tell you, when we're working with really large and complex application, it's never going to be like this easy at all. And I'm going to have more content coming out where I'm going to show you that when you're really working with real world application and things are really complex, it's never going to be that easy coding it so smoothly like that. But I'll show you in the future that when the application is complex, it becomes really hard to use JPA because we want to do a lot more complex operations in the data using SQL. And because we're trying to do these operations, then we're kind of like forced to use SQL queries and then pass them into Java and then have the application execute those queries instead. But for now, this is going to do, JPA is going to do, JPA is actually very powerful. So for a lot of applications, JPA should be all you need to manipulate your data in a database.